Hello, my name is Miss Amy. I am one of the children's librarians here at Monroe County Public Library, and I am here for preschool fun to show you how to make your very own dinosaur clothespin craft. And then we're going to do a short nonfiction story time so that you can learn a little bit more about some of your favorite dinos. So we're going to pop on over and we're going to do the craft together. Follow along as best you can. Feel free to pause at any time and come back. If you make mistakes, that's part of life. Just breathe and go back into it. The first part of this, the craft is to cut out your chosen dino. Remember the teeth and the jaw. You may have to have a grown-up help you with this part, but try your best to follow along the lines. And then once you get all of the excess paper cut out, you are going to take a minute and probably stretch your hands because it's hard on your fingers to be cutting all of the, this paper. But the second part is to get a pencil, crayon marker, and trace your dinosaur on a piece of colored construction paper. And then you're going to want to cut out that design again, just the body of the dinosaur and then the jaw part of the dinosaur. The teeth are already white from the printer paper so you don't need to trace those again and then you're going to get some glue and you're going to put the glue on the teeth attach them to the jaw into the bottom part of the the head and then once you're done with that you're going to glue the jaw part to the clothespin the lower part of the clothespin and then do the same thing with the the head as well and then attach a googly eye because a googly eye always makes things better. And then um, the head part might be a little bit harder to glue onto the clothespin. So use pressure with your hand um, and leave it alone for maybe a minute or so to get it dry and sturdy enough. And then it should be good to go. And if it pops off, just add some more glue and you should be good. A Book of Infographics, Dinosaurs by the Numbers, by Steve Jenkins. Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for more than 150 million years. Some were small and speedy and covered with feathers. Others were huge armor-plated beasts. They were fierce predators with terrifying teeth and claws. A gigantic plant-eating dinosaur was the largest animal to ever live on land. These amazing animals lived all over the world. Then about 66 million years ago, almost all of them vanished. This book uses infographics, illustration, charts, and graphs to show you what dinosaurs looked like, how they lived, and what happened to them. And it introduces the dinosaurs that are still alive today. Some dinosaurs ate plants, such as the Lambiosaurus, which is seen here in the picture. And if you look, this shows you the size of a human, an adult human, to the Lambiosaurus. So it's a pretty big dude. So dinosaurs were a kind of reptile. Like all reptiles, they laid eggs. Some dinosaurs had feathers, and unlike other reptiles, many dinosaurs were warm-blooded. And some ate other dinosaurs. Ooh. So this guy over here is called Allosaurus. So he is very similar to a T-Rex. So he's the type of T-Rex that you see in movies or pictures that have the horns uh, by the eyes. So that's what the Allosaurus is. The first reptiles lived about 310 million years ago and dinosaurs appeared 235 million years ago. Most dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago, but one kind of dinosaur survived. Can you guess from this page what dinosaur survived? A bird! Living dinosaurs. Scientists tell us that birds are actually a group of dinosaurs. They survived the mass extinction that happened 66 million years ago. So this gal over here is called a caudip caudipterex. Codipterex, and uh, she was feathered uh, that lived 125 million years ago. The skeleton looks like a, a lot like a modern bird. 
So from this skeleton picture, can you find where the beak is? Where is the beak? Right there. And from the skeleton, could you find where the wings are? This one's a little bit trickier. Right here. So you can see right here, kind of where I'm trying to highlight it. It's little chicken wings. So it is actually a very small dinosaur. So if you see the little images below the page or on the bottom of the page, uh, the Caudipteryx was actually a little bit bigger than a pigeon, but not by much. Um, so that doesn't mean he wasn't um, speedy Gonzales. They were pretty fast, actually. Birds evolved from predatory dinosaurs that could walk upright, such as the Coelophysius. Coelophysius. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to learn the correct pronunciation of each of these dinosaurs, so they do not make it easy. Um, it lived over 200 million years ago. The Archaeopteryx which is the middle one that you see here. A feathered dinosaur was one of the first birds. It lived 150 million years ago. Today, there are some 10,000 species of birds or living dinosaurs. So that's pretty crazy to think about. How big were dinosaurs? So this is kind of representing some of the animals that we live with today, such as the, can you find the great white shark on the page? or the grizzly bear. So these are pretty big animals, and these are showing you how big they are um, in comparison to something like the Triceratops, or the, let's see, I'm gonna try to pronounce this one, um, the Peria, the Perasaurolithus. <laughs> The Parasaurolus. <laughs> I cannot do this. <laughs> but this is the guy that I'm trying to talk about. So he is a, um, a herbivore, I believe. And then there's the Ankylosaurus, the Triceratops, the T-Rex, the um, Therionzinosaurus, which is the, another herbivore which is surprising because of the big claws that you see there. So it, was, it, it um, was a dinosaur that ate plants mostly. So the grizzly bear, which is a pretty big mammal, you can see in comparison, it looks like the T-Rex could probably eat those pretty, pretty easily. And then on the next page, you can see part of the whale, the very bottom in, um, comparison to the largest ever um, found uh, creature on Earth, which is the Patagon, Patago Titan dinosaur. So that is um, what, like one of the long necks, I guess you would call them. But this gives us some other um, comparisons to like a giraffe, which is a modern-day animal, and saltwater crocodile, the African elephant, <clears throat> something called the spina... Spinosaurus, which is, um, looks pretty big compared to, if we go back one page, to the T-Rex. So it's another carnivore. But this was just neat to kind of take a look to see how big something was. Um, these dinosaurs are pretty massive. How fast were dinosaurs? So they had had different speeds. Um, this is the estimated speed in miles per hour. So imagine your car going this fast or you're driving this fast. So the fastest one that we've discovered so far um, would be the Aviaraptor, um, which is the very top one right here. And they um, were thought to have feathers, like a bird. Um, and they uh, ran up to 40 miles per hour. So pretty fast, faster than a human for sure. And then the Velociraptor, which is 25 miles an hour. And the the Oleosaurus, which is the T-Rex with the horns, the two horns above the eyes. So he ran 18 miles an hour, which was definitely faster 
than humans. Um, and then uh, scientists estimate the speed of a dinosaur by comparing their fossils to modern day animals. Dinosaur footprints left in the mud or sand can tell us how fast dinosaurs can move. Dinosaur fossils. Most fossils preserve the bones or other hard parts of the animal. Sometimes the footprints an animal made in sand or mud also become fossils. Scientists learn about what dinosaurs ate by studying coprolites, fossilized dinosaur poop. So this is the process of how a fossil is actually formed. So dinosaur dies. A flood buries a dinosaur with mud or a volcano covers it in ash. And then the bottom here. Minerals in the earth slowly turn the bones to stone. And then millions of years later, erosion uncovers the fossilized dinosaur bones. Ooh, dinosaur claws. These are pretty cool. So I'm going to try to read what these claws are from. The next page shows you the dinosaurs that match up with this. So um, the first one, this claw, the big one right here, is from the Megaraptor. Um, the next one is from the Deinonychus. Um, which means terrible claw, actually, and that's the curved brown orange one right here. Looks like a pretty sharp, mean, deadly, kind of looks like a little cat claw, except probably just a little bit bigger. The next one um, right here, the third one, is from the Oleosaurus. So remember, that's the T-Rex look-alike dinosaur that has the horns by the eyes. And then the next one is a um, saber-toothed tiger. And then this one, this gigantic one that um, spans both pages, you can only see part of it right now, that is from the Theriosinosaurus, which is actually a herbivore. So they use these to, to grab onto plants. So this shows you the animals that they matched up with on the other page here. So the Theriosinosaurus, um, right here had the longest claws of any animal that ever lived. It probably used its claws for defense and to pull tree branches into its mouth. But it, it was a, a very uh, <laughs> large creature as well. And it, um, these different colors represent carnivores, herbivores, and modern day carnivores. So we have one, two, three meat eaters, one modern day um, carnivore, and one herbivore. Dinosaur skulls. So this is another cool one. So again, this is another page where it spans two different um, images. So if I continue from one page to the other, it matches up. So the first skull, the small one, is called the Velociraptor. You've heard of that one. It's a very popular dinosaur. The next one's the human skull. So they're not too far off. Um, the Velociraptor is actually smaller than what you realize. It's, I think it's one of the smaller ones. Um, but in comparison to the human, it's pretty similar. And then we have the Diplodocus, which is the thing that has a little hump right here. And then we have the, uh, right here, looks like a, an owl, a crocodile. And then the uh, Periosophilorus is this... Um, gentle giant right here. So they have this really long kind of horn um, feature poking out of their head. And then this very terrifying looking one with the sharp teeth is the Spinosaurus. So they're um, part, they're in the family, they're a relative I believe of the, the T-Rex. I'm not 100% on that. And then this one is pretty common. Um, most people know this one is the Triceratops. So to go back to that page, the Triceratops skull alone is seven feet wide. Um, well, from nose, tip of your nose, to the back of the head. So imagine it being seven feet. <laughs> it's a very big head. 
king of dinosaurs. So this one's a favorite. The Tyrannosaurus rex is sometimes called a T-Rex. It lived 66 million years ago and it's probably the best known dinosaur. The largest and most complete T-Rex fossil skeleton was discovered in 1990. It was named Sue after the scientist who found it. The T-Rex's uh, long, heavy tail helped balance its huge head because it it look it's a funny looking design. Um, you think it would tip over, but the tail helps it balance, kind of like a cat. T-Rex could probably run faster than the average human. Um, as we looked at other pages, it showed um, up to about 20 miles an hour, maybe a little bit faster, and the human could only run about 15. So if you saw one, it would probably be a snack for them. The T-Rex could swallow 500 pounds of meat in one gulp. So three, three humans <laughs> and one gulp. So it was a pretty big, um, pretty big creature. T-Rex fossils have been found in the Western United States and Canada, and the T-Rex may have been, have used its tiny arms, the little arms, to grasp its prey. The T-Rex's huge mouth, sharp teeth, and powerful bite made it a top predator of its time. The biggest dinosaur of all. So we talked a little bit about this. It's called the Pata, sorry, Patago Titan dinosaur. Um, there may have been larger dinosaurs, but we just haven't found their fossils yet to be sure. But this is the longest um, and largest one for sure so far. It was very, very slow. It only walked five miles an hour. Its long neck allowed it to feed on leaves that other dinosaurs could not reach. So here's a little reference. So there's a human. And this is the size of the Patagonia titan dinosaur so it's massive the patago titan weighed as much as 14 african elephants or 1000 humans that's that's big patago titan fossils were found in argentina a country in south america a tank on legs <clears throat> Ankylosaurus was a slow-moving herbivore, but it was well protected by its armored skin and a deadly weapon. Its tail, ooh, it's like a club. With its bony tail club, Ankylosaurus could have shattered the bones of any predator, even a T-Rex. Ankylosaurus went extinct with most of the other dinosaurs at 66 million years ago. And the bottom of the page, it compares um, to an African elephant, a human, and then there's the Ankylosaurus. So. It's bigger. Um, it might not be as tall as an elephant, but it's looks definitely longer. So imagine an elephant-sized creature with a club on its tail. Ankylosaurus could run about as fast as a person, so you might be able to get red or away from one if one was chasing you. Uh, the dinosaur's body was covered with bony plates like those of a modern-day crocodile. Sharp spines protected, protected um, Ankylosaurus's head. Even its eyelids were armored. Huh. So we'll s look right here. So imagine little armor plates on your eyes to protect them. It's pretty, pretty cool. Ankylosaurus grazed on plants with its tough beak. So it was an herbivore. It was not a, a carnivore. What killed the dinosaurs? 66 million years ago, an asteroid traveling at 20 times the speed of a bullet crashed into earth the asteroid landed in the ocean near what is now part of mexico the asteroid's impact killed eight out of every 10 animal species and then the collision formed a crater 100 miles across so it's a big hole a big tidal wave the asteroid strike caused a series of deadly events it caused shock waves that caused um, that started earthquakes Tsunamis as tall as skyscrapers swept across the land. Red hot debris from the impact started forest fires all over the globe. It started volcanic eruptions. The dust and ash and smoke blocked out sunlight for years. Years. Imagine it just being ash in the sky. Uh, massive lava flows in India at the, around the same time might have helped kill off the dinosaurs as well. Um, it's pointing down for number three. And then without sunlight, plants could not survive. And soon the plant-eating dinosaurs died out. And without prey, the meat-eaters 
uh, the carnivore dinosaurs uh, starved. So these are some of the dinosaur facts. I'm not going to go all, well, I'm not going to go over these because I think I've uh, chatted your ear off about some of my favorite critters, but I'll leave the pages up um, for just a few seconds so you can look at this. You can always pause. Um, this book is also available, not as an ebook, unfortunately, but we do have plenty of copies for you to uh, request holds to um, pick up of this specific title. Um, this is a JER book, but I will leave the details at the bottom of the description. So um, all you have to do is click and then uh, we can get you set up with one of the, uh, the books to read. But thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I love uh, learning about new things and trying to pronounce all these new um, dinosaurs. I tried my best, but um, let's see uh, if you can do better. I mean, you can, you can try if you... Um, get your grown-ups permission um, to try to pronounce some of these names uh, that you find in the book and record yourself. That would be funny to, to have. But I will leave you. Thank you.